All right, we're back with Dr. Kraft, with Dr. Alm, and Jeff Benick. We're here at Friendship CrossFit. Um, still working on some tips and tricks for the open. Uh, today we're going to do some hand transitioning in dumbbell snatching. Uh, so Jeff's going to take it away. Yeah, so this is one of the things that kind of came in a few years ago at the open. And, you know, for the most part, most people have probably started to begin practicing this. A couple common faults that we see with it, though, are going to be letting that dumbbell kind of get away from the body a little bit and then messing up that uh, hand transition just a touch. So what we're going to show here is going to be the optimal hand transition, which is going to be locking out at the top and then almost throwing the dumbbell and catching below that face. So what we think about when we do that is keeping it tight to the body. You see how he looks up at the dumbbell to make sure that hand transition is good. Now, if we feel like we don't have the hand transition down, let's say maybe this year they jump up to the 65 pounder or the 70 pounder for guys, ladies maybe work up to the 45 or 55 pounder. What I would recommend is what Doc Alm was showing there that second time, which is bringing it down to the front rack and taking a breath for a second. And that makes the transition much more easy coming back down, okay? So a really good way to both breathe if you start to get out of control, but also if you start to get a little bit heavier, it takes that throw away so there's not so much force coming into that hand transition on the way down. So really important to make sure that as we're doing this, we are making sure that the, the reps as they come into that hand, it's not out away from us and it's not dragging us down. Dr. Cross, you guys kind of talk about that. That's kind of what Jeff was saying, is if it gets too far in front, we also we want to pay attention to what's happening with our body at that time. So as he's coming down, we want to the hips remain square to not relax and let the weight turn us sideways, but staying neutral, <laughs> shoulders pointing forward, and us, uh, hips both pointing forward, <laughs> and then, he loves showing the bat. Uh, <laughs> he's really good at the bat. And then the other uh, aspect that we want to talk about too is um, to making sure that we're driving with the legs, that it's not staying high and just hinging with the lower back. I got two of these. Okay. He's going to give us two good ones. Only two. Yeah. So that it just becomes uh, how much can your back pull off the ground and uh, you'll definitely pay for it. Um, cool. Yeah, I mean, I think the only other thing that I think about is what is that offhand doing, right? So the, uh, the easy one, when you start to lose control, is going to be to brace or touch that other leg, but the open is pretty much taking that out, so we can't do it. So we're going to lose stability when we do that, right? So that's why that brace is super important as we come down and think about those up. And I like to think about that hand shifting and throwing itself back to help us with that counterbalance. So it's kind of out and away. So as he does that, that helps him balance so he doesn't need to twist quite as much. Good. Yep. That way oh we have a plan for it, which is one of the most important things. So we get no no reps because he puts his hand on his quad like he just did, right? No right there. So that hand on the quad, it's just kind of where we want to go. It's our default mode. So we want to take that away. So we have to have a plan with that other hand. And if we're going to plan for it, might as well do something that's going to be advantageous for us, which is to be a counterbalance force for that. Okay? Great. Cool. Thank you. Yep.